On Sunday, we looked at the life of Samson, and I'd like to revisit that again today. I always find it interesting how uh, amidst my studies, the Lord often brings additional things throughout my week uh, that add to that, and I'd like to share that with you today. Stay tuned. Of Samson a bit more today. You remember that on Sunday we uh, focused at the end of the service, particularly on things related to spiritual compromise, spiritual apathy, or indifference. And in that, talked about several elements that we need to consider if we're to resolve that. Uh, first of those is the evaluation part of asking those questions of whether or not we we're in that state and really being honest with ourselves about it. Uh, we can rationalize very, very well that we are not in that, that we're doing just fine, that we don't need to make any further progress. Uh, and so really that call to evaluate. And as I was uh, thinking on that further this week, I, it was interesting that something else showed up in my inbox um, from the author, Tim Challies, and just a speaking to that thought of evaluation, but also considering honestly, again, where we're at and where we want to be and whether we are in, uh, what are we, what are we truly desiring? Are we desiring a faith that is growing or are we desiring a faith that stays small, that stays stagnant, um, that doesn't really make much progress? Um, and I just want to read these things to you. Um, he writes this. He says, we are probably so accustomed to seeing bonsai trees that we don't think much about them. But if you ever pause to consider how strange and freakish they really are. Uh, bonsai trees, are those ones we normally associate with um, Middle Eastern culture, uh, are otherwise normal trees that are deliberately kept small. They're grown in little pots where they can put down only shallow roots. They're obsessively pruned to stunt them and keep them from growing tall or wide. They are mighty woods relegated to mere flower pots, whole forests confined to side tables. Though they may live for centuries, they grow no more than one or two feet tall. And though they may have such potential, their gardener applies constant and deliberate action to keep them from ever reaching it. What a strange thing that a gardener would choose to grow a dwarf uh, in place of a giant. Some churches do something like this to those who attend them, don't they? They fear that doctrine is drab or divisive, that it is boring or alien, and determine that it is best to keep the church entertained and immature. They feed their senses rather than their souls and tickle their egos rather than transform their minds. Rather than help them grow tall and broad in their faith, they keep them low and stunted. They give them a bonsai faith. Then some Christians do something like this to themselves, don't they? They make a profession of faith, but content themselves with scant growth and bare maturity. They can sometimes seem to be passive in this, but there is a sense in which they are very active. They do not merely allow themselves to be satisfied with spiritual puniness, but they actively pursue it. They work to dwarf themselves, to resist the impulse to grow their knowledge and stretch their faith. They restrain the spirit who would so readily help them grow. They give themselves a bonsai faith. But God's purpose for his people is never smallness and never stagnation. Rather, his purpose for us is constant transformation, constant renewal, constant growth. All things we talked about on Sunday. We are to resist any allure towards spiritual laziness and instead be active in growing and maturing. We are to press on, always straining, always striving, always pressing on toward the goal. Thankfully, God is committed to our growth and eager to help us. And thankfully, there is no trick to spiritual growth, no mystery to solve. We are to simply... We simply have to take hold of the means he gives to us, which we mentioned on Sunday is really that in correlation with the spirit, that, that obedience and submissiveness of heart, 
we grow our relationship with him through the word and prayer to we uh, through commitment of ourselves to the local church where we can serve we can serve and be served and as we take hold of these simple means and as we dedicate ourselves to them god transforms us from the inside out he causes us to grow rather than stagnate to have a faith that is tall and broad rather than shrunken and puny this and so much more is ours through Christ, if only we will reach out and take it. If only we will resist the allure to be bonsai Christians who have a bonsai faith. And the verse behind me was one of those that, that came up. Now I understand the context written as Peter is talking about suffering, talking about uh, being warned about those who would draw us astray, draw us um, from a firm grasp on the truth, as he says in verse 17. But this last verse in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 18, is an important encouragement and exhortation for us um, as we live day to day. Uh, the goal that we are to pursue. Uh, Paul encouraged, um, I believe it's the church at Corinth, he says, follow me as I follow Christ. Um, there, there's this active pursuit of him that we are to have, but also this active growth, as Peter writes, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Peter says that. Paul reminds us in, in chapter 12, verse 2 of Romans, to be transformed by the renewing of our minds and not be conformed to the world. And perhaps the thing that is resulting in your bonsai faith is conformity to this world rather than being transformed and allowing God to transform you. You are yourselves being an active part of that as we see in Philippians chapter 2 verses 11 to 12. Alongside God to see your faith grow, your knowledge of him, and then a growth in your steps of faith with him. Consider those passages, those thoughts today. Uh, maybe it's something you need to encourage someone else with, a conversation you need to have with them, as you've noticed, um, a, 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 that they have become stagnant in their own walk with the Lord. How might you encourage them to get back on track, come alongside them, um, to spur them on, as the writer of Hebrews said. May the Lord use...